And then once you let go, you got to be ready to handle whatever happens. So if the wind's not right, you know, you trust your coach with your life pretty much is how it works. So, so can you back off of one? You really can't, right? So you're in these, you, when you let go of this, the bar, right? When you hop on the ski jump and get, and get ready to go, if you let go of the bar and you, you get in your interim position, you're going off that ski jump, whether you like it or not. So like I said, like if your clips out, if you're, if you're, if you didn't put your binding in, if you, if you're, if you're not set, you're, you're in some trouble. So, you know, you just have the ritual that you trust that you, that you can never second guess, right? You check your bindings, you check your equipment, you check your goggles, you get on the bar, you can do it again. And then once you let go, you got to be ready to handle whatever happens. So if the wind's not right, you know, you trust your coach with your life pretty much is how it works. So uh, if, if your coach flags you, you know that everything's safe. Everything's going to be totally fine. I just got to do my job. What makes one jump better than the other? Is it speed, timing? I always, you know, timing is probably the biggest one. Just like that takeoff, the minute, like bringing your chest up a little bit or just not getting all the power down, whether that be in your shin, like, like just not being in the correct position, um, not putting 100% of the power that you possibly can put down, down uh, and getting into that aerodynamic position, uh, you're going to be, you're just screwed right off the bat. So it, you, know, you really can't bring your chest up at all. You really got to just stay low and then just use your legs and go. Uh, you know, you're trying to, you know, extend and pull away from the hill and just kind of, you know, glide on that cushion of air that you've created for yourself. Is there a certain body position that you're trying to get into once you're in the air? When you're driving down the highway later today or, you know, if, if you're in your car, pop, pop the window open and stick your hand out. And you'll notice, like, if you have it down here, it's going to dive straight into the ground. If you bring it up here, your hand's going to go back to the back of the window. But then you're going to find this little happy medium where your hand just wants to go straight up. And that's the body position we're trying to find. With our skis and our body, we're just trying to be not too far aerodynamic, but not also not too far back. Just something where that wind will just bring us bring it right up. That's, that's the best analogy. Like, you know, everybody can do that in the car. Everybody has done that in the car. Do you drift or do you just fly straight ahead? Well, your body's never symmetric. So, um, you know, no matter how hard you try, you know, one, one, one shoulder is going to be a little bit stronger than the other, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. So you always, um, you, you, but you also naturally want to go straight. So, so you find these ways to correct. So my, my skis are never symmetrical, but I go straight, if that makes sense. But obviously wind, whatever conditions, whatever it may be, you end up having some jumps where you go to one side more or less. But those hills are massive, allow for like a pretty big amount of play. Uh, so you're never too worried about like, you know, landing on the other, you know, landing in the grass or landing, you know, off the hill. But, uh, but yeah, you, you learn how to deal with it and you end up, if you do it enough times, you're not going to get too scared by it. So you end up knowing, just knowing how to deal with it, I guess. How far will you drift? Is, is it always the same direction? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely athletes that are known for it. Um, and we say the wind's, the wind's better on the right side of the hill. So you, you go to the right side of the hill. That's not true, but you see some athletes just do it. Um, and they're totally fine. And then they, they have a play of like, you know, 10, 15 meters. So those hills are really big at the landing hill. Uh, so you, they're allowed to do it and they're totally fine. They end up being, you know, they're nothing, you know, changes. But at the end of the day, I, I always think like, well, that's just extra meters. I could be flying straight, but I'm not flying to the right, you know? So I just think like the straighter, the better, but, uh, obviously there's, there's athletes out there that, that break those rules and, and end up, you know, winning competitions, doing it. This looks crazy on TV, but. Is it different in person? You'd be more impressed in person, honestly. I think I think uh, TV does it some justice, but not enough justice. How far are most people going? Yeah, it's, what, what would it be? 200, 250 meters through the air. Um, that's a quarter of a kilometer, but uh, so it's a little bit less than a quarter of a mile, but it's damn, it's darn far. You're flying from, you see, so take off through one goalpost. And then you go through two more goalposts, and then you land at the 50-yard line, right? So obviously you're flying through the air, but have you ever hit anything? Oh, man. Well, sometimes you hit bugs, and that's always a fun one. Like, if you get a little, like, bee splattered on your goggle, you'd freak out a little bit. But I will say, when I was a little kid, I do remember letting go of the bar on a smaller hill. So I was totally okay, but I remember being like, I didn't put my bindings in. And the way the ski jumping boot works is you kind of slam this little, this little piece of uh, plastic into the back of the boot that allows your, your heel to come off the ski a little bit. And I was like, I didn't put that in. 
So I remember jumping into the air and just one ski went. Whoop. And it was it was the most scared I've ever been in my life. It was it was wild. I felt like I was I was okay, thankfully. You know, you get learn you learn how to fall at a young age. You uh definitely make enough mistakes where you can fall safely. Basically just keep your knees straight in the air and you're gonna be totally fine. Your body's gonna stay relatively straight. But I was I was freaking out. <laughs> Thank you.